Colombia's history is marked by its colonization by the Spanish in the early 16th century. The country gained independence from Spain in 1819, led by revolutionary leaders like Simón Bolívar. The post-independence period was turbulent and with numerous civil wars and political upheaval. The 20th century saw Colombia grappling with internal conflicts, including guerrilla groups, paramilitaries, and drug cartels. However, recent years have witnessed significant progress towards peace and stability, marked by the signing of a peace agreement with the FARC um, guerrilla group in um, 2016. It's, it's, it's sort of known for, for culture and innovation. It is a bustling metropolis nested in the Andes Mountains, known for its rich cultural heritage and modern attractions. Uh, Bogota offers a blend of historical landmarks and contemporary urban life. As I said, sort of in, in, in the intro, um, La Candelaria, the Gold Museum, and Montserrat are sort of like a, a must, <laughs> a must see. Uh, and to um, visit, it's 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 absolutely wonderful. If you're gonna go to uh, Montserrat, um, the mountain, there's a cable car sort of that takes you up. I would recommend going early if you can. Um, it does get busy, but it's a beautiful view from um, up up there to sort of over overlook the um, um, the, the city. Um, sort of a, a fun fact. Um, Bogota is home to the largest network of bicycle routes in Latin America, known as um, the Ciclovia, which closes major roads to cars every Sunday um, and public holidays, which is absolutely a sight to see. Now, in regards to the temperature or, or climate, I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of in the Andes area kind of thing. Um, so it's a little bit, and I'm, I hope I'm not getting this wrong, a bit higher up, right? So I found the weather to be very, um, very comfortable. I would say at night, um, it gets a lot cooler. So for let's say, for example, Cartagena, that, that you know, it's, it's heat, um, it's warm weather, while um, Bogota, which is more elevated, is a little bit more um, cooler temperatures, but it, it, it can get very hot also. Um, during the daytime. In regards to safety, I've I've always sort of rule of thumb for 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 for, for me as as a traveler, as a person who loves to travel, I don't do anything that I wouldn't do at home. Let me explain that. There are people who go on holidays or vacation, and I don't know why but they engage in behavior that they would not dare to do even in their own home, right? Their own city, their own country. But for some reason, they go abroad and they think this behavior is okay. I think some people also think that when they go to countries um, that they may perceive as not as uh, developed or whatever as, as, their, as theirs, they may kind of think they have immunity to everything, right? Some people, you know, do you know who I am? Do you know where I'm from? There's this sort of pompousness that some people carry. I would say leave that pompousness at home and come when you travel, go with the idea that it is a foreign country. It's not your home. Respect the place that you're actually in and respect the people um, of the place that you are visiting. You don't go to other countries and try to exercise some kind of cultural superiority or anything like that, right? That is just being ignorant. So I would have thought, I, I don't do anything that I wouldn't do at home. Having said that, I even take that and I scale it back by five, right? So I'm very aware always of my surroundings. I'm very aware as to where I'm heading, right? I, I can map it out. And and before I leave um, the hotel or any establishment I'm staying at, I will usually ask and get a, a, 
a review from, you know, the the hotel concierge or um, someone that works from the, at at the hotel. I'll say, you know, I'm heading into this region, or I'm going here to visit this, this and this. How how is it? What do I need to know? What do I need to be aware of? And they they're absolutely, I will say, always 100 percent um, correct, except maybe once so when I was in Chile. But um, it's it's absolutely, I would say. It's safe in Bogota, depending again on whichever neighborhood you you stay in. Now, in in the center of the city, um, it, it it can get a little bit scary. I think for anyone who is not used to close, high volume of people, loud cars, honking. Um, and you know narrow sort of streets and having to navigate all of that and just a, a large mass of people depending on the time of day so right around plaza bolivar um just be mindful right and i would say don't don't go going down alleys and 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 roads that are kind of sketchy um even in the daylight i i don't recommend that to anyone I, I used Uber everywhere I went. Um, it was effective and it was really cheap, like super, super, super cheap. Um, if you are in the downtown core, like if you go to visit El Museo de Oro, the the the, the gold museum and some of the other museums that are there, El Museo de Botero, it is just so it's beautiful and it's wonderful and it can take, for example, like an entire half a day um, if you really want to pay attention to the art or, or to some of the history and so on, it can, it can take a while, but you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful to do those day, half a day trips. Like spend, I, I think I did the museum, um, the gold museum in the morning. And then I went, I had lunch and, uh, then I did the other museum, um, in, in the afternoon. So it, 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 it was great. And for Montserrat, the going up the sort of uh, mountain, um, I didn't go super, super early, but I would recommend going early. It, it just, it does get busy. And again, just be mindful where you have your, your stuff. Don't some people, you know, tend to wear their flashy jewelry and their fancy watch and the expensive this look. You're not there to show off what you've got, right? Save that for home. So to just be mindful, I think, um, anything that is very expensive, leave it at home. No, no need to bring it unless you're going there for a fancy function or you're invited to a gala or something. Um, and in that case, you know, you, you, you hire a car and um, they pick you up, they drop you off, right? The other thing too that I am very used to doing, I always have my phone in my hand, always have my phone in my hand. So that is something that um, when I was out uh, one of the times, this person just sort of came up to me and she said, you shouldn't be you know, showing your phone like that. And I kind of <laughs> was like, what? And she's like, you know, you, you could be robbed. And I said, Oh, okay. Thank you. And I put my phone in my pocket, like in my pants pocket. Okay. And, um, you'll have a wonderful time. The food is fantastic. The restaurants are great. People are just awesome. Oh, the other thing too, the traffic. Oh, la la. The traffic can get really bad. So just, you know, calculate also, um, <laughs> that it may take you time from one area to another. Like we, uh, uh, we had left uh, Montserrat in the afternoon, and from Montserrat, that's, that's that's the mountain. We got down and then um, heading back to where I was staying. It was just, I mean, it took I think over an hour to get back to where we were, and. I was just, by the time, I mean, 
I was exhausted. I didn't want to go do anything else. I just went to my room and I was like, I was going to pass out. But uh, it, it, the traffic does, does take a toll out of you sometimes. All right, so just be mindful about that. Cartagena. Cartagena is it, sort of like the colonial gem on the Caribbean coast. Cartagena is a UNESCO World Heritage Site frame, famed for its um, well-preserved colonial architecture, vibrant culture, and stunning Caribbean coastline. Um, the attractions there, I would say the old city or the old town, Ciudad Amurallada, um, it's, it's, enclosed, it's enclosed by the colonial era wall. Um, this area is filled with colorful buildings, plazas, and um, churches. Castillo San Felipe de Barajas is a formidable fortress that played a crucial role in defending the city from pirate attacks. But that also is usually a lineup, just go early. Or if you do one of those bus tours, they will you pay for your entrance and everything uh everything at once or they'll tell you to buy it at the um once they get you to the for get you to the for, the fortress um if you do the bus store uh usually they will have um their own special line or bypass line so you don't have to line up um where everyone else does so that's kind of um a good Kind of access folks it gets hot so um, walk with a bottle of water um because it gets really really hot um rosario islands um beautiful arch archipelago um perfect for snorkeling and diving so off of um um cartagena you can there's these different islands you can actually go to and spend the day there beautiful beautiful beaches there's they and there's tons of people um either at at the hotel you're staying at or you will see agencies and stuff that can sell you the day trip and um it will include everything make sure it includes your meals and stuff like that too like if you're going there to spend the day make sure it includes like uh, lunch um drinks usually is not you have to pay for your drinks extra now, I, when I went, I actually went to the sort of like an island sort of area first and then went to Cartagena. Um, so you can take the day trips. It's not an issue. But also the other thing too, once again, if a person is quoting you $50, right, to get, get on the speedboat or whatever, to take you and bring you back and you know they they usually work with another establishment there as to where you are seated on the beach or whatever so um an interesting fact Cart cartagena was one of the main ports for the spanish um treasure fleet making it a prime target for pirates uh, like sir francis drake now I stayed uh, when I was there in the sort of like the newer part of Cartagena where there's all those skyscrapers, um, hotels and stuff like that. And um, the hotel I stayed at, you know, the beach is right in front. Uh, they, when you go to the beach, usually you pay for, you know, you, you pay for it for, for the, the, the chair um, and for the umbrella if you want one of those. And, you know, they have a little, this little square that is yours, basically. And they usually will um, provide also food and drinks or all of that. So you just go there, you speak to the person, they, they ask you what kind of chairs you want. You want one of those that you can kind of lay back in and get your tan if you need to get the tan on. And... Um, they will bring a little table and that's where they put like your drinks, your beer, your juices, um, the fish, if you know, you like like fried fish, it's just yummy and um, really reasonable in, in on price. And it's enjoyable. 
The other thing too that might annoy some people is there are vendors on the beach and they will be walking up and down um, selling their, their, their stuff. What I found that I, I, I liked was that as soon as you say no, they just um, car- car- um, car- carry on. No one, at least in, in, in my case, didn't um, continue to, to, to bother you or anything like that. They're, they're pretty okay. I found, though, if you hesitated and you're like, uh, maybe, uh, 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 then that person's like, okay. You know, it's like they just receive a signal that, that you might. So they'll just stay there and keep asking you. And then, you know, they might leave. And then two minutes later, they'll come back again. And it becomes this, this recurrent thing. Now, um, when I was there with my mom, my, um, because also most of the people who are selling on the beach and stuff are um, Afro descendants. They, they, they are black um, Colombians. And, you know, <laughs> the funny thing is, well, my mom anyways. So when I was with my mom on the beach and two, two ladies approached and they were trying to um, uh, massage stuff. And my mom just looked and she goes, you're trying to sell me a black woman. You're a black woman. And you're trying to tell me you want to charge me how much? <laughs> And the woman just looked at my mom. She goes, oh, senor, I'm so sorry. And uh, my mom goes, listen, I, I I don't need the massage, but if you're going to like sell something to another, another black to black, you shouldn't try and steal. You shouldn't try and, so my mom gave the poor lady a lecture on, on like how we should treat each other. And um, it was just the funniest thing at the same time, because like at, at the end, they were, they were all laughing. Because my mom sometimes, I know she 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 can be very very funny in in the way she um, delivers um, stuff, and um, it it was it was great. But but they're really welcoming, nice people, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. Actually, some of the best conversations I had with people were in Cartagena. I just sort of um, there were these 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 two vendors. Um, that by day, day two, that I was in Cartagena, I just became friends. Because <laughs> we would sit there and chat and chat and talk about the political situation, talk about um, discrimination and racism, and a lot of really, really great conversation. And I, I really, uh, you know, uh, appreciated it. And so really good people. Cali. So Cali is known as the salsa capital of the world. Um, it's located in um, El Valle del Cauca. So El Valle del Cauca is the region. Um, it's renowned for its lively salsa music and dance culture. Um, the city is also a hub uh, for sports and cultural um, fe- uh, festivals. I haven't gone to Cali, but it's also on and not on, on my list of places I, I, I want to visit, uh, um, same as Medellin. I have not gone to Medellin yet. So um, local attractions, um, the Cali Zoo, one of the best zoos in Latin America. It features a wide range of animal species. Um, Cristo Rey, a towering statue of Christ, offering panoramic views of the city. Okay, so Cali is um, short and sweet because uh, I haven't gone to Cali, as I said before, and um, it's on my list. Um, the the food, the cuisine, um, it is so sabroso, yummy, yummy, yummy. Um, so in the intro, you know, I talked a little, about, a little bit about just the food in general, and I'll sort of here, I think, I want to just tell you guys about arepas. So both Venezuela and Colombia make arepas. And there is a battle between who started it, where it comes from. I'm not going to get in the middle of that battle. Um, <laughs> I just love arepas. That's what I know also. So arepas, it's sort of the, it's made from corn, cornmeal. And it's sort of like a cornmeal cake that, that you make. Um, not a sweet cake, like a cornmeal cake. 
um, that that can be grilled. Um, you can fry it also, or you can bake it. And um, then you 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 sort of stuff it with cheese or any kind of meats, vegetables and stuff. And it's just really good. It is so good. I love it. Um, I, I was taught how to make um, <laughs> uh, arepas. And I got so good at it that my dad would be like, he's like, are you making arepas anytime soon? <laughs> And I'm like, why? He's like, well, you really make really great arepas. So are you making them soon? Which was code for, can you go make them now? So, <laughs> but I haven't made um, arepas in a very, very long time. Um, and now I'm kind of craving it. But arepas, um, and then you have uh, bandeja paisa. Bandeja paisa is, and Venezuela has something similar to this also. They call it um, el pabellón. So, it's a hearty um, platter uh, featuring beans and rice and ground meat, um, chorizo, fried egg, avocado, and plantain. Now, doesn't all that sounds really good? Because <laughs> it is. It is so good. Um, you feel so fulfilled after you eat <laughs> um, a plate of <laughs> um, bandeja paisa. So it's, it's, it's really, really good. And... Um, Depending on, on, on certain regions or places, they may make it a little bit different, but those, those are the staple. Those, that's the traditional way to do it. Um, ajiaco is, is a traditional soup. Um, people say it's mainly from Bogota, made with chicken, potatoes, corn, and uh, any sort of local herbs. Um, it, it's... it's, it's 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 good. <laughs> now the funny thing, when I was a kid, I hated soup. I I couldn't stand the sight of soup. I don't know why, or maybe I do know, but no need to get into that. But I hated it. As a teen, I sort of started to like it a little bit more, or, or started to enjoy soup. And I think because I needed something that I could just you know. Um, that was warm and would fill me up quickly. Um, and then I was an adult. I love soup. Give me a good soup and I'm just super happy. Because um, you can put all this stuff in soup also, right? I, 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 I love it. Absolutely love it. So that in regards to sort of traditional dishes and and, and the sort of food and, and you find a variety of so many things. Um, Colombian food is very diverse, right? Uh, and it's it's a reflection of the people, and um, the different regions have different spe um, specialties that um, um, that you will find in the different areas, of course. So I, I've I, I'm thinking there's also I wanted to touch on race and especially with the election of. Um, the new vice president. But I think I don't want to make this too long, long, and it's already quite lengthy. So I think I'm going to do, do race all by itself, right? Diversity and race and stuff. So I'm going to sort of close this, this, this part. Um, I just want to say that, that, the, the visit of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex is, is, is significant for several reasons. It highlights Colombia's progress as a nation and its role as a beacon of culture and innovation. I, I think that the couple's engagement with, 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 with local leaders, youth, um, and women will will sort of underscore their commitment to social causes, um, such, 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 such as mental health um, and online safety, aligning with the goals of R12 Foundation. So this continuation of showing that um, the Duke and Duchess through Invictus is is one thing right and through arch wall um they're able also to tackle 
other other social issues that is impactful that makes a difference that is actually doing something and i find it and this is just 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 me right i and i could be just seeing things or <laughs> envisioning things but for some reason i'm getting the feeling that people in general especially people with authority and power that understand the influence that the duke and the duchess have the reach that they have also is that you want them in your city or your country to highlight things that you're doing well right and it's it's a way to show the rest of the world through whether it's in Nigeria with with them you know building that whole facility for veterans um for rehab and stuff like that here in Colombia to demonstrate you know the things that are being in place in order for whether, whether it's online child protection um social causes and actually right now there is an issue happening um, because the, the the and I'll 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 tackle this a little bit more in when I talk about race. The vice president has been facing like, I mean, don't be naive and, and think she's had it easy. Even as a vice president, to the, to the amount of racism that this woman has had to face and to still be dignified about it has been just incredible i mean think of it as if i were to put it in 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 a way that i think most of us can sort of capture it imagine the orange person in a speech just casually calls kamala um Harris, the N word. Imagine that. So just imagine he's on stage and he's giving a speech. Then he just says, Yeah, and that N word, Kamala Harris. It's, it's stuff like that. And the usual trope of, of, of calling, you know, a person who's black an ape or gorilla or monkey it is there there's a there is a a, a, a movement that oh i'm going to stop myself because <laughs> i said i was going to talk about this in the other section about race because there is a there there's there's there is stuff there that i want to really give it the, the attention that it that it needs to get and i'm so happy that this is that <laughs> the invitation was extended to um, Prince Harry and to Meghan because it's given an opportunity to speak about these these issues, but also introduction in some ways to so many people of Colombia, uh, because the image I think that many still have of Colombia is this place that, you know, guer um, guerrillas, the guerrillas that like, like, um, Hello, military military stuff happening and 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 drugs and all that kind of stuff right and in the last couple of years i mean things have changed so much so much and i think this is an excellent opportunity um and wisely so for them to invite um the duke and the duchess of sussex um because they know that the amount of media coverage and attention that they get and the thing that i love is them thinking back of what duchess megan said when she said in an interview or was it on the ducky series i think where she said look if we're going to get this kind of attention then that's okay because then what we'll do is highlight charities and um, other important issues that we want you to focus on. So if you can try and focus on us, 
we are going to take you so you can focus on these other things and be aware of them that are important, which I, which I think is such an intelligent way to use your platform and use your influence. It's just, I freaking love them. I, I, I'm not joking. Like, I love them. I love the way they think. I love the way that they are exercising their, their influence. I love that they've made a decision to, to move on in regards to what's happening in the UK and all that nonsense continuously because with every day being bombarded with what the UK media and these idiotas, right, um, do and say, and these ridiculous sort of ways of trying to tie two things up, like in the docu documentary on um, tabloids on trial, right? When, <laughs> when Rebecca asked um, Prince Harry, yeah, but your, your father and, and, and you know, your sister-in-law have cancer. So why are you, why, why, why are you carrying on with this, with this lawsuit? Why, why should you do that? And I'm thinking, um, that's a stupid question to ask. I can understand you maybe wanting to ask about his opinion on, on where that whole thing is, but there's a different way to ask that question. So the way she asked it, it was sort of like saying, okay, so let me see if I get this straight. Let me see if I get this straight. So I have in one house, so we're, we're, we're in a house, right? I'm just using like a, a stupid example, but I'm in a house that is consistently being like people are throwing rocks at this house. And my house is made out of glass really good glass, but it's made out of glass and they keep throwing rocks, throwing rocks, throwing rocks. And I know that they continue to do this. Like stuff is, it's, it's going to get cracked. It's going to break. Stuff is going to happen. So I need to, you know, fight the people. And the only way I can fight them is through a system, which we call the courts to get them to stop and also to expose why they keep throwing rocks at my house. And then there's another house, not even in my neighborhood anymore. This is like across the ocean, right? Where family members of mine are sick. But they keep financing the people who are throwing rocks. And also they're leaking information, telling the people where and how and when and who, whatever, who are throwing the rocks. Now I've made attempts that when I'm here to actually go see my family that is sick, you know, allegedly, but they don't want to see me. <laughs> so what's your question again? Why am I continuing with the lawsuit? They're two different things. I can hold two different thoughts. I can do two different things. One is one thing, one is the other thing, right? Even though it's, it's sort of related because my family and that, that, and that's the area where the question should have come from. Knowing that your family is leaking information, knowing that your family collaborates with the tabloids, how does that make you feel? <laughs> Anyways, enough about that. Let me go back to Colombia um, and wrapping this, this up. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. Um, I think that their visit, which coincides with the inaugural World uh, Ministerial Conference on the Elimination of Violence Against Children, um, where they will participate in discussions and initiatives aimed at creating safer environments for children. I'm not sure if they're staying for the conference also, or if, because I know they are going to be in Colombia ahead of the conference. I think the conference is in November. I think, I'm not sure. Um, so it all sort of coincides really nicely. Um, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex um, visit to Colombia is a momentous um, occasion that, that, that will shine a, a global spotlight on the country's rich heritage, cultural diversity, and ongoing efforts towards social progress. As they explore Bogota, Cartagena, and Cali, 
they will not only experience Colombia's vibrant culture, but also contribute to meaningful dialogue on, on, on present social issues. Now, here is a little wrap up timbit. Um, Colombia is the second most biodiverse country in the world, home to more bird species than any other country in the world, period. Now, okay, no, 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 I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I was going to say something else, but I'm going to leave that for race. Um, okay, so love you folks. Thank you. And hope this is helping um, for you to get to know Colombia and the cities that the Duke and Duchess are heading to in, in a more intimate way. And um, I can't wait. I can't wait. So see you in the next one. Um, that I think will be now part three.